be with you all. And um, this is a fun thing for me to get away from my 16 month old and distract myself from also being eight months pregnant. So <laughs> um, very fun time right now. And I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see here. This is your creative power. And this is something that is really, um, has just been a theme in my life as an artist, as a creative, as a business owner, having to continually reinvent myself and start from scratch. And um, I wanna share with you some of the tools that have helped me to um, bring my visions and ideas to life. Ultimately, I believe that um, you have that power. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's all right. Hi, we're just starting. Um, so really the premise of this workshop is, is my belief that, you know, you do have the power to bring your visions and ideas to life. And especially as women, we are so powerful. And, you know, obviously we can't control all the things that happen to us externally or being in a global pandemic or um, just some of the timing in our lives, but you have the power to put yourself in motion and uh, step up to the plate and play ball. And I really believe that is why we're here. You know, that is how we learn and grow and evolve rather just than just kind of being in our heads and thinking about what we might wanna do, really bringing that into a space of embodiment putting that energy into motion, whether that's through speaking or something physical, um, that's our learning. And we'll talk about it a little more uh, throughout the workshop, but you know, there are many ways to get to wherever you want to go. I'm just gonna share some of the things that have helped me and specifically through the lens of creating women in Wyoming. Um, the most powerful thing is really just to start, just to get going and by doing so, your project, your creation, your vision, your inspiration will take on a life of its own. And then it's just a matter of, um, you know, kind of keeping that momentum up or pivoting um, as well. So I want to start actually by um, introducing you to a really powerful creator. If you follow my project, um, this is Nell G. She just passed actually on Friday. She was the first woman that I worked with for the project. She is an abstract or was an abstract expressionist painter, artist, just powerful creator. And when I heard about Nell G, she was um, in her 80s and painting 10 by 30 foot canvases on her ranch in Banner, Wyoming. And I just thought, wow, what a ferocious desire to express yourself, you know, not just on this small platform, but really at this scale, you know, what, why does she feel so driven to create at that scale. And what I learned from her more than anything um, is just this process of permission, you know? And I think that's so important for us as women to remember is just to give ourselves permission to create and to play and to try. And for Nelgi, she does that through art uh, and through her canvases, but we all have, uh, ways that we can express ourselves fully. And it's just a matter of tapping into that and creating that space sometimes for ourselves, for our voice to be heard. So I wanna call in Nell G's spirit tonight to be with us, this powerful creator who is just um, such an inspiration. And if you have a chance to listen to her interview on my podcast, I've been listening to it the last couple of days and it's so full of wisdom and life. And um, I still learned so much from her story, even though it's been a couple of years since I worked with her. So I wanna ask us all, you may have come here with an idea or something you wanna bring forth. Maybe you're at that place where you're stuck. You don't really know what's next. Um, so I'd love to start with just seeing what comes through for everyone. Maybe something you didn't expect as well. So if you can, Find a comfortable seat if you're not in one already. We'll just close our eyes and take a few deep breaths. Come into this present moment. Thank yourself for being here. 
Feel your breath in your chest. Just feel yourself in your body. If you find your mind is wandering, just come back to your body. Asking yourself, what is this moment calling me to create? What needs to move through me? And what do I want? And how can I show up? How can I serve? When you're ready, just go ahead and open your eyes. And if you have your pen and paper handy, just go ahead and take 30 seconds or so to just jot down anything that may have come through for any of those prompts. Just take a few more minutes. Start to wrap up whatever it is that you're writing. And since we do have a smaller group tonight, if anyone would feel inspired to share um, if something came through for them that they was, weren't expecting, or maybe that you were expecting or reaffirmed where you're at, you can go ahead and unmute and, and I, share. Yeah, sure. We'd love to. That'd be great. I thought that I knew what I came to create and what I've been kind of stuck on. And then all of a sudden you asked those questions and I thought, maybe I don't know as much as I think I do. Maybe that's one of the reasons I've, I'm stuck in it. And so what came to me was um, an open, rather than a specific, I, something new was an openness that maybe there was something else out there that I'm being called to create. I don't know mm. about yet. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, I want to tell you a little bit about my journey before we really get into the meat of this and we're going to head into a breakout um, as well. But for those of you who don't know my story or are familiar with my background, I was born in Powell, Wyoming, which is in the northwest part of the state. Um, growing up in Wyoming, I never imagined I'd have a future here. I always thought I would have to leave to be successful, um, despite having pretty deep roots in the state. This is my, on the right, great, great grandfather, Alexander Linton, who started the Matitsi Mercantile. So if you're driving through Matitsi, that was my family's store as well as the first bank of Matitsi. And then my dad and grandpa here owned farm and ranch stores in Powell, um, which is also in the Bighorn Basin, as well as Riverton and Casper at one point. Um, my dad has Big R Ranch and home here now. So we have really deep roots, but growing up in this state, I just, couldn't wait to leave. I really never thought I'd be home. So when I did land back in Jackson, um, at this point I had become a photographer. I had been living in New York, shooting headshots. I came back to Jackson where my family's now based and thought, you know, I have this skill. There are 700 realtors in town. Let me just try and see if I can make something work. Um, I really didn't know if I would stay, but I started my business, things started to pick up and I was making it happen. Um, but a part of me still felt like there was more. And this project really came about, about a year into my business where I just had a little bit of space, you know, had that foundation where I could start thinking a little bit bigger picture again. And creatively, I wanted to have a little more impact than just the influence of my clients and helping them. 
And have, being from somewhere else in Wyoming, I also really wanted to, I felt disconnected from the rest of the state being in Jackson. If you live in Jackson, you know it's quite a bubble. Um, and I still really had this belief from childhood that I, I couldn't possibly do whatever it was that I wanted to do. I couldn't be fulfilled. I couldn't be stretched creatively enough here in Wyoming. And eventually I just questioned that idea, you know, was that true? And when I just really got real and asked myself if I was really just being limited by this circumstance, I could not say indefinitely, yes, that's correct. You know, I really didn't know. And so this project was really born in that curiosity, also in that frustration and wanting to connect with my peers who I felt were fulfilling themselves and how, what were their journeys about? What were their struggles? What were their triumphs? And that's really where this project was born. Um, it was really quite an epic adventure in the heart of production from 2016 to 2019 when I was creating it. Um, I was traveling thousands of miles across the state, shooting a lot of film, which was really fun for me, just a departure from my commercial work and then sitting down for hours with these women because I just loved hearing their stories. Um, something that just lights me up inside is adventure and discovery. And so this project also just filled my soul in that way of getting to explore and discover Wyoming um, in a way that I never had, even though I grew up here and have really deep roots. And then finally creating this exhibit, which when I had the idea to create this project, I tend to receive information quite visually. And so I saw this physical exhibition, I saw it at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West in Cody, which is near where I'm from, and um, was brought that to life in 2019. But um, it was a pretty big vision. So a lot of my efforts with the project was, okay, seeing the end result and then really backtracking it to how do I get there? Where can I start right now? Um, and so that's a lot of what I'm gonna be taking you through tonight is just that process of, of bringing something to fruition. Um, you know, to be honest, by the time that I got to the exhibit point, it was a bit anticlimactic because I had had such an amazing adventure for three years and had so many incredible experiences that I wasn't in expecting. Um, but it was, oops, really lovely to, um, get to that point. So for me, at least, this is kind of what my creative process looks like. I, I have an idea or you have that energy come through or, you know, just asking yourself those questions, finding, creating a little space like we just did in the beginning to ask yourself, what do you want? What do you need? What needs to move through you? And then, you know, we have to find our way to the state of embodiment to um, putting ourselves into some motion. Um, for me, when I first saw that end result, which was the exhibit, um, it was quite overwhelming. How do I get there? You know, I don't even have any women that I know of to connect with yet. How do I get a show at that space? And what can happen is we end up in this, we land in this space of stall, um, which can happen for so many things. You know, maybe it's fear holding us back, fear of what people might think, um, worry, our self-criticisms. Timing is so critical. You know, as, as you now know, I'm about to pop another baby <laughs> out here. And so my timing and where I'm at presently is, is very different than where I was when I created the project. So it's, it's being realistic about where you're at too, but ultimately, you know, it's moving through that stall space into this element of action and embodiment in some way, because that's really where we, we learn. Um, another way of thinking about this is we receive that information like we did in the beginning, just allowing information to move through us. That stall space, I think, can actually really be a beautiful space of learning. You know, for, for all of us, if it were easy and we just went from point A to point Z all the time, we would not be here. So that middle kind of transitional murky space um, is so valuable if we can zoom out and be more self-aware and 
uh, for me with a project, just asking myself that question of challenging my own limiting belief of Wyoming as limiting, was that true? Even though I didn't have a clear answer that really set the tone to then propel me into a space of doing and being. So grab your pen and paper again. We're gonna just do another little exercise and check in with ourselves on where we're at. And in this process of receiving, learning, or stall, and then that action embodiment, ask yourself, where am I in this process right now? You know, am I receiving information or do I feel blocked? I also think it's really valuable to be aware of how you receive information and inspiration. You know, for some of you, it might look like sitting in that meditative space. For others, it might be riding your mountain bike and going or, you know, flying down the ski hill where you can just clear your mind enough to allow information and inspiration to come through. Um, for me, driving actually, you know, down a dirt road like this is hugely, hugely helpful. I think just growing up in Wyoming, spending a lot of time on the road, I see some people nodding. Um, you know, it's just a way I know to clear my mind, movement. So um, just being aware of if you are in that phase of block, what helps you at least just feel more spacious so that you can receive information. If you are in that space of stall, why? And then what's true? You know, if you're, if you're afraid of taking that next step, I always like to think, you know, what's really, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen here? Am I at risk of losing my life? Probably not. Like with this project, people might say some mean things about my work. That's probably the worst case scenario. So I think I can handle that. So just being afraid of that criticism for me was not a good enough reason not to move forward. And then how would it feel to embody my dream, vision, idea, inspiration? You know, put yourself in that present moment. If you have something you're working on, uh, fast forward to being there right now. And if you're not clear yet, like Liz was sharing, you know, it's just that openness. What does that feel like? You know, just kind of being in that space of being open and receiving and maybe that excitement of something coming through that you may have never thought of or imagined. Okay. So we're gonna go into our first breakout and um, we are gonna do pairs, so groups of two, four minutes. So two minutes to share, which is pretty compact. Um, you can share your intention for this evening. You can share what came up from you in the meditation. You can share anything that's come up for you thus far, you know, as much, I think the more honest Honestly, you can share, you know, this is a safe space. We're all creating for each other. Um, you know, that's why we're here. So two minutes each to support each other and listen. And I'll have Sam send us away. Bear with me one second. We just had one newcomer join us. So I um, just have to quick reorganize a little bit and... Um, and I will um, get everybody into their rooms. There we go. Okay. Here they come. Oh, hi, Jackie. Look at your hair, Jack. Oh my goodness, cool. We took pictures of you when you were just little. I did. That's his soccer haircut, everyone. <laughs> I like it. <gasps> Thank you. 
That was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tell me more. Um, so we were just talking about how like, it's just like, we just love like that whole idea around just putting something in motion. Um, you know, something in motion stays in motion. I mean, we sometimes like slow ourselves down with our own self doubts, um, especially as women, I think we have this like narrative in our head that gets in our way, but. Um, like every, women think like five steps ahead and I feel like men don't and so we just get in this loop of like all before these things could go like, wrong before we even start kind of, and like learning how to put that aside and Carissa was talking about how like women have supported her more than anything else and she was yes. surprised by that I feel like that's a Wyoming thing I feel like that's so dumb to say but like I've lived in a lot of places and that's what I've told all of you is my favorite thing about since, since moving here I've not met so many women that are just incredible and doing things with their life and like Everybody supports each other. No one's like, I love it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's we were we were at our like the beginning of like all of our entrepreneurship living right next to Lindsay. And we were like very threatened. Like we're like, wow, Lindsay's like, she's gorgeous. She's got all these big ideas. Like she's gonna like do this. And you know what? The biggest supporter we've had is Lindsay. And 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 we, you know, so I just want to say, like, if anyone ever needs any support, right? Like, here's three advocates and I just think that what a beautiful community that we live in, that we have this just huge female support system. So, um, sorry, sorry, to add on to that as well. Um, I like how you said to just break things down, to get started and just start with a small step, start with the email, start with a call, like just to get the ball rolling. And mm -hmm. while those things are really scary, like once you get started, people are ready to help. Like this community is incredible. Once Chris and I started, like we were terrified, it was terrified. But the community was so excited and people were ready to help and it's just taking those steps to get it all going. I, yeah. You build your community. I mean, because even though I'm from Wyoming, moving to Jackson, I remember when I moved here, I didn't know anybody. And it does take, you know, you just it just takes time and putting yourself out there to build that. Um, and I know we're kind of from all like we have Liz's and Fruta and we have um Gina's and Lander and um, you know, it is, it is so much about building that support. It's so critical. Um, and you can start from scratch and, and build it up. Um, it is amazing to me, like how scary even just a call can seem when like you really think about it, like it's just a phone call to someone you don't know. And, uh, the worst they're going to say is no, or not call you back. But um, yeah, yeah. Like how many times a cold call has literally been like such a breaking point in a great way for me. Um, uh, but like still having so much fear around that. So yes, I, I do think, um, yeah, it's just, it's just examining why we're stalling too. Like, is it just, we're afraid, then that's a great opportunity to, um, step into that fear and ask yourself, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Oftentimes it's not going to be that bad whatever the, the end result is. Thank you for sharing that, ladies. Does anyone else want to? Can, can I add on to that, maybe? Um, I wonder, and maybe you disagree with this, so <laughs> feel free to do so. Um, but, you know, for so often what holds me up is I, I don't have that vision of the exhibit, the podcast, <laughs> you know, the whole thing. Um, and what I have found, like, I mean, you know, you're just start or what's the next light a step idea. Um, I found really helpful. I mean, phrasing it in my own way, but like that, you know, using your words here, um, I have found that to be incredibly encouraging and like provides a lot of clarity um like there's a lot I you know I was what I've said in the breakout rooms is like I'm at a spot in my life where everything I'm I have to create everything at this point <laughs> um and that's a really exciting opportunity uh but it's also can be daunting and overwhelming but continuing to like make that one call or the like those few calls and just being like I don't know exactly where this is going here's a thought I have, you know, like that has been, um, it, it's getting me kind of to the next level with every step. And so 
I, um, I think it's okay to not have the end goal in mind always. Um, and that's just me. So yeah, I see you nodding your head. So I, I hope that's encouraging, but <laughs> um, otherwise, yeah. I mentioned it in the beginning, but when I got even to the exhibit point that it was a bit anticlimactic because everything that had gotten me there was really the good stuff. And um, also what you touched upon, you know, we all receive information differently. I'm a very visual person. I'm a photographer. Like it, it kind of all works together. Um, so having that self-awareness of how do you, I heard it described also as how do you dream? Do you get feelings? Do you hear words? Does writing help you? Um, do you just have knowings? You know, for me, I, I do tend to get, I see a picture, it's very clear, but that's just for myself. I think we all kind of receive information differently absorb information differently. You could also maybe think about how do you learn best? You know, there's kinetic learners and audio learners and maybe just when you do feel like that point of stuck, you know, what, what helps you be just in that light spacious space? Um, is it listening to music or journaling or riding your bike? Um, so I think it's important that you know, we don't compare ourselves to each other as well because we do all receive and absorb information differently. Um, but it, 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 I think it is really helpful to know how you receive that for yourself. And absolutely, you don't have to know the end result. Um, that's kind of the great thing is like seeing where you can end up and, and go with it. Thank you for sharing that, Ashley. Would anyone else like to share? <sighs> Um, we talked a little bit about creating the space to let the curiosity and like creativity come in because I think that that's really difficult for a lot of us to do it. You know, we're just on autopilot and kind of going every day. Um, and so like taking a step back and just allowing yourself to be creative and let your brain just rest for a bit. And um, I think it's a real key component of this. And I, I think that that's a, a big block for me right now is like, I need to create that space so that I can just let those ideas really formulate and maybe my brain can then get a handle on a clear vision of where I'm headed. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Just having that little bit of space is so critical. And I have a few more things I want to share with y'all. So I'm going to, um, this is a good point to do that because the other part of the creative process is this being, you know, is that spaces, spaciousness, is that permission is allowing what maybe we didn't expect to come through. Maybe it's a pivot. Maybe it's a change in direction. Maybe it's leaving the plan behind. Maybe it's deciding to stop what you're working on. Um, for me, once I got going, you know, obviously there are all these things I have to do to keep moving forward to the exhibit, but there was this constant discovery process. And for me, a lot of that was within how I chose my subjects. And I didn't start the project knowing everyone. Every time I launched a new chapter, five stories, it was a completely blank canvas. I would have a theme or maybe I would no, I wanted to find a pilot, but so much of it required me being open to uh, someone's suggestions or again, something to come through. And so this was in chapter three. I really wanted to feature a pastoralist point of view. I was really, I have this fascination with sheep herders. It's my um, grandmother's heritage in Yugoslavia. I've read all these Wyoming stories from Gretel Elric to Laura Bell's journeys of their solo sheep herding adventures. And there's just, there's always been something about that life that I find really beautiful and maybe connects to a past life I had at one time. Um, but it was really hard to find. I knew I wanted to find a woman in this field. I wasn't finding anything on Google, just like kind of the normal things was not, um, bringing anything about. And it really took kind of months of reaching out to people, researching, but also just letting it go to some degree until I finally got a recommendation for um, this woman, Mickey Toman. And I remember right before I met her, I was driving in Southeastern Wyoming, just on this 
back road, I think to work with another woman in this project. And there was this flock of sheep on the desert basin hillside with a lone sheep herder. And it just, you know, I got that like heart flutter. And I was like, this is, she's here. She's like in this area. That wasn't her on the horse. <laughs> Mickey doesn't actually like go out and herd the sheep anymore. But I, it was just like that knowing. And, um, you know, maybe a month or two after that, I got a recommendation for Mickey. And sure enough, uh, that was, that was, I'm fairly certain her flock of sheep, it was in that arena. So I think within the creative process, you know, there is this magic about it, especially once you get going, if you allow for that spaciousness, if you allow for that openness and aren't, you know, I think we can get like so attached to the plan, the things we have to do, and to just continually remind ourselves to step back and allow the process to unfold as well. For me, at least that those were the most beautiful parts of the project. And this, this profile was so fun. Um, getting to work with Mickey Toman and her three daughters, uh, Mary and the purple here is really like the lead organizer and called me up and said, Hey, can you meet us at sheep camp next weekend? <laughs> and I mm -hmm. camped with Mary actually in one of their like sheep caravans at the base of the Wind River Mountains and just got to be completely immersed in their world. It was so beautiful. And I couldn't, I couldn't have planned it better. You know, I couldn't have like actually planned that. It's just something that, that kind of fell into my lap. That was so, so wonderful. So we're getting uh, close to our time here. Just some final thoughts as we wrap up you know, these roadblocks <laughs> that we've all talked about, they're a part of the process. I really feel like that's actually why we're here in life. It's, if it were just all easy and mapped out, we wouldn't be here tonight. You know, that struggle is so uh, illuminating. And as Nelji would say, we all have our boulders we have to climb over in life. And that's where we learn and that's how we grow. So it's just remembering that those roadblocks are not impenetrable. You know, maybe you need to take a step back, pivot, give yourself some space, but it's just a matter of getting your head in that space where you can still at some point move around, you know, like be like the water in the stream, just moving around the boulders and not getting completely blocked up by whatever you're confronted by. Asking and receiving help. I think this is difficult for us as women, but you know, if you feel like you don't have that great network or support system, know that's something you can build and just always um, leaning on support because we aren't really meant to do it all alone. You know, when it is our vision or something we have to put forward, yes, we are the ones that have to keep putting energy behind it, but we can have that network of support. You can hire help. There's so many ways that you don't have to do it all alone. And then seize the moment. You know, if you do have some energy behind you, go for it. I um, am so grateful I worked on the project when I did. Uh, Pre-pandemic, pre-babies, it, it was just this, the, the timing to create it was really aligned. Um, we were also celebrating in 2019, it was the 150th anniversary of Wyoming recognizing women's right to vote. And then 2020 was the 100th anniversary of the 19th amendment. So there was a huge spotlight on Wyoming from the national media. And my project became this lens to see where some of Wyoming women were at today. So I didn't create the project <laughs> to get to share, that, share it with Forbes or the Travel Channel. It was in American Airlines magazine, but that was really cool. And I really felt grateful that I could share this project that was so special to me and that there was interest outside of Wyoming as well. <laughs> and then again, just launching the exhibit uh, pretty quite literally before my son was born, I really had two babies that year. Then getting to share <laughs> with all, as well as uh, <laughs> Another baby that's cooking. 
And then just to keep the work touring, it's been at the University of Wyoming Art Museum in Laramie um, since September, it closes in July and then it'll come to Jackson in August and September to the Center and Art Association Galleries. I'll just leave you with one final thought from Nell G. Oops, this is a good one too though, from Anne. But my, my wish for you is that, you know, you do just find those, find the support you need and find, find the confidence to keep moving forward because I just think we all have something really valuable to share and we're not meant to keep it all inside to ourselves. It's so much better when we can share it with each other and with the world. And there's just so much beautiful learning and discovery that takes place by the act of creating. So thank you all for being here tonight. If anyone has anything else they'd love to share or questions, um, if you do have to go, it is 7.15. So understand if you need to, if you need to leave. Um, but if anyone has any final thoughts or things they would like to ask, now's a great time. And thank you all again for being here tonight. Stop sharing that. Thanks everyone for putting up with my multitasking over here. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Um, thank you everyone for being, oh. Did you want to, did you have a question or are you guys tuning out? Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. That was really wonderful. Thank you to all of you who are here. And um, I will be sharing a recording to everyone who signed up as well as an evaluation form. We really appreciate getting those back. And um, once again, our application window is open for signing up to become a mentor or a mentee starting in September. Um, the application window is only open for this month of May. So um, tell your friends, spread the word, and uh, thank you for being here and being part of Momentum tonight. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Go get them, everybody.